We're Ashley and Jordan. In May of 2019, we quit our jobs and left home to travel the world full time. Our goal is to see as much of the world as possible through delicious food, breathtaking nature, and the different people and cultures that call this planet home. Feel free to subscribe and follow along as we keep going places. In our last video, we explored Warsaw, Poland, and today we've made it to Denmark and we see what Copenhagen has to offer. Good morning from the happiest country on earth. We are in Copenhagen, Denmark. We have four full days here in Copenhagen and I'm so excited because this time we get to go maybe a little bit slower. We have been moving and grooving lately. Today's plan is to kind of hit the high points of the city. We are starting that day off here in the King's Garden, which is just outside the palace. It's a beautiful park, free to the public. You can walk around and explore and take in a little nature. So let's do that. Fun fact about the guy right behind me, that is Hans Christian Andersen. He is a very famous poet and author known for writing The Little Mermaid and my personal favorite, Thumbelina, among many, many others. And he's honored throughout Copenhagen. I believe he was from here. You can visit his childhood home. You can visit a statue of the Little Mermaid. You can visit his grave, which I believe is kind of north of where we are right now. Anyway, he's a big deal from here, so we just thought we'd mention it. Gorgeous sort of rose garden, manicured garden. Whoever does these hedges, good job. They are sharp. Very pretty. We're done here at King's Garden and the Rosenborg Castle. We're both a little bit hungry, so we're gonna head to the local food hall and hopefully scope out some lunch. All right, we have made it to Torvahallen, a super cool little food hall, stall situation, market, and we are gonna try and find something to eat. A food hall is everybody gets what they want. I'm gonna have some pasta and Jordan is gonna go outside in just a bit and get some Chinese. So everybody's happy. Y'all, that pasta was so good. We got to talk to the owner who is from Rome and we got to talking because as soon as I walked up to place my order, they had wine for sale and I looked at the bottles and the red wine was from Choo Choo Vineyards, which we visited last summer in Italy on the Vespa tour. If y'all haven't seen that, go check out Kara and Nate's video about it. 
I just can't even believe it. So we were like, oh my gosh, we've been there. And she goes, oh, you've been to La Marque. And we're like, in fact, we have. Oh, the cacio e pepe was so good. The owner's from Rome. Obviously, she knows what she's doing with that dish. They were so kind. Highly recommend. The restaurant is inside the food hall. It's called Il Mattarello. And they're adorable, and you should eat there. Okay, next up, Jordan's food. Okay, Ashley mentioned that I'm getting Chinese food, and I normally do not eat Chinese food, like what I'm typically thinking of. This is different, it's Chinese street food, and they have some kind of wrap, like a vegetarian wrap, so I'm gonna get that and see how good it is. Okay, so I got the vegan wrap and it has egg in it, avocado, cabbage, sesame, scallions, crunchy wontons, and it's way bigger than I thought. This is a great value. It was only like 65 krone, which is like nine USD-ish. So definitely a good value here. Mm. It's really good. Let me get another bite with avocado. Mm. It's very good. The crunchy definitely helps add some like texture difference from the soft stuff because you know it's got avocado and this soft kind of wrap on it. The cabbage helps too, it's like fresh cabbage. Also it has egg in it, so it's not exactly vegan. It's more um I guess vegetarian. It's good though, real good. All right, our tummies are full, so we are happy, and we are heading to the main square or city hall square here in Copenhagen. And one of the things I want to mention, there are so many bicycles here. Like, I think there are more bicycles here than vehicles. Square. It is sort of the main big square at the end of what feels like the old town area. It's very touristy. There is a noticeable influx of people as soon as you turn onto the street to walk towards it. Like just full of people, full of, you know, the Hard Rock Cafe, all that kind of stuff. Very touristy, but the City Hall building is gorgeous. It's 415. The city hall building itself is gorgeous and just nearby, you can see it from the square, is the entrance to Tivoli Gardens, which is the second oldest amusement park in the world and looks like so much fun. I'm truly sad that it's not like in season for the gardens right now. It's super fun, there's rides, there's games, but they close for summer and I don't think they open again for like Halloween festivities until the day after we leave. But I highly recommend a visit if you come. And we're just gonna kind of walk around and take in the square and then move on to the Nyhaven area, I think, to end up the day. New plan. It's the next day. We pulled our usual stunt. We got tired, we went home. It's a new day, we're in a new place. So, to catch you up, we went and had lunch this afternoon at the Organic Boho, which is just down the street from where we are now, which I'll tell you in a minute. So good, highly recommend. We had smoothie bowls, we had falafel, we had wraps. Ugh, it was delicious. Excellent portions, highly recommend that spot. Anyway, now we are in a very unique part of Copenhagen. On the island known as Christianhaven or Christianhaven is the 
semi-independent commune of Freetown Christiania. So, well, from what I know, <clears throat> this area used to be sort of military buildings, barracks, facility, and then it's gone through several evolutions. It was abandoned, it was taken over by the neighbors, and then I think in the 70s, it became what it is today, which is sort of a semi-independent commune, mostly self-governed. They do have to abide by Danish law, but they have a lot of their own rules here. They're very, like, volunteer-based, community-based, no violence, no weapons, no cameras in some parts. There are some parts where you can buy and sell um, pot freely if you want to. <clears throat> it's a really unique place, very edgy vibe, lots of art, lots of cool things to see. We'll show you as much as we can. We really don't want to offend. We've already been warned by one local about our camera, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm just ready to explore. on this place. It is definitely unlike any other. It's taken me a minute to sort of feel at ease just because we do have a huge camera set up and we've been warned, we were warned before we came in and then when we came in we were asked to go somewhere else with it. And so you just kind of feel like you stick out. But after I kind of got the hang of it, got used to it, we learned kind of what to do, what not to do. It's a very interesting place. There's so much cool art. And for the most part, people are just coming and going and they don't, you know, no one's like truly staring at you. But anyway, highly recommend a stroll through or if you are so inclined, you can get a little, you know, a joint or two. They're really big on no hard drugs here. It's only pot. So anyway, I'm rambling, but the moral of the story is it's a really interesting place and I'm glad we came. Okay, so we just left Freetown Christiania and it was different. In my opinion, it was weird. Like, it is just this totally separate, independent living community. And I'll be honest, with our camera set up and everything, walking through there, I felt a little uncomfortable. I don't think I actually ever got comfortable the whole time. We had like four different people come up to us and like warn us about filming or tell us to stop filming in certain areas. But I will say, they were all really nice about it in the sense of like, they would tell you the rules and then I would ask, okay, is there somewhere I can film or where can I film? And they would tell me, it's okay to film over here, but not on this street or not in that area. And you'll be okay to film there, like, don't worry about it. So I appreciated that. Everyone was like really, I guess, cordial in that way. But yeah, there's a ton of really cool art in there and like structures to see. So I definitely like really recommend going and checking it out if you're ever here in Copenhagen. But if you don't want a lot of attention, then leave your camera at home. Okay, so close your eyes and picture Copenhagen. Does it look like that? It looks like that, right? Because this is the classic spot, the postcard picture. This is Nyhaven, an area along the canal here in Copenhagen that everyone thinks of with the beautiful colored buildings and all the great bars and boats. This is the spot to be. We are gonna take a walk, maybe get a coffee, and maybe get a drink if we're feeling crazy. But I can't wait, it's so beautiful here. It's not happening. So every 
once in a while a touristy area lives up to the hype. That was a beautiful little happy hour we had. It was a little hectic at first, but once we got a seat and got some schnapps, which is the local thing to drink, it was great. I had a great time, the service was great, which is surprising for a touristy area. But now it's time to say goodnight. And I think that'll wrap up our time here in Denmark. We've seen all kinds of stuff. We have a couple more days, but we're gonna take those easy and probably have some working days. So we will see y'all next in Amsterdam. <laughs>